I have some bad news. You're not getting all of the nutrients your body needs. <laughs> Wait, how can I be so sure? Studies evaluating not just the average American's diet, but also various diets build for their health promoting effects show rampant nutrient shortfalls. For at least 10 essential nutrients, more than half of American adults are not meeting the estimated average requirement of those nutrients. And for at least four essential nutrients, more than 90% of American adults are falling short of their dietary requirements. I know what you're thinking, that's not me. It's not like I have scurvy or rickets. Those are diseases of malnutrition caused by a single nutrient deficiency. And while it's great that these aren't as common as they used to be, I'm actually talking about nutrient insufficiency. Nutrient insufficiency refers to a dietary shortfall, meaning you're not hitting the recommended dietary intake of that nutrient, but you're getting enough to avoid a disease of malnutrition due to nutrient deficiency. The reason why we worry about nutrient insufficiencies is that they increase the risk of just about everything that can go wrong with us health-wise. So let's take a look at the statistics showing that most people, even those who are incredibly intentional about every bite, still end up falling short of essential nutrients. And of course, how we can fix that. Let's start by talking about what most people think when we're discussing nutrient shortfalls, which is nutrient deficiency. A nutritional deficiency is defined as a dietary intake of a nutrient so low that it causes a disease of malnutrition. Examples are iron deficiency anemia caused by iron deficiency, it's right in the name, scurvy caused by vitamin C deficiency, rickets caused by vitamin D deficiency, beriberi caused by vitamin B1 deficiency, pellagra caused by vitamin B3 deficiency, and night blindness caused by vitamin A deficiency. While these diseases of malnutrition are not as common as they used to be, they're still more common than a lot of people realize. For example, a 2017 study estimated the prevalence of deficiency of vitamin A, B6, B9, B12, C, D, and E, as well as anemia. Based on biochemical markers using data from blood tests, taken as part of the 2003 to 2006 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. This study showed that 31% of American adults are at risk for at least one vitamin deficiency or anemia. 6.3% are at risk for two vitamin deficiencies or anemia, and 1.7% are at risk for three to five vitamin deficiencies or anemia. The study authors further identified low dietary intake as the reason for these high prevalence of nutrient deficiencies. In fact, their analysis showed that a mere 6.4% of their study population was hitting the estimated average requirement for all of the nutrients they looked at. Vitamins A, B6, B9, B12, C, E, and iron. In addition, the study identified certain groups at even higher risk for nutritional deficiencies including 37% of women, 55% of non-Hispanic Blacks, 40% of individuals living in low-income households, and 42% of individuals without a high school diploma. And I'm sure it's no surprise that dietary insufficiency of essential nutrients is more common among those living with food insecurity. It's important to note that often the earliest symptoms of a nutrient deficiency are vague and nonspecific, like fatigue, irritability, aches and pains, and increased susceptibility to infection. Yes, you could be in this nearly one third of people at high risk for a nutrient deficiency and be blaming it on a stress, a bad night's sleep, or the viruses going around your kid's preschool. But of course, like I already mentioned, Dietary deficiency of essential nutrients is not the only problem. Nutrient insufficiency also contributes to health challenges. Nutrient insufficiency or inadequacy is defined as intake falling below the estimated average requirement, but without a clear disease of deficiency. The estimated average requirement is the estimated amount of a nutrient that would meet the nutritional needs of half of the healthy individuals in any particular age and gender group. The remaining half needing more. Basically, nutrient insufficiency refers to that amorphous gray in between getting enough nutrients and getting so little that it causes a disease of malnutrition. 
As an example, it only takes 10 milligrams of vitamin C daily to prevent scurvy, but the recommended dietary intake is 75 milligrams per day for adult females and 90 milligrams per day for adult males. And uh, meeting our nutritional needs of vitamin C reduces risk of cardiovascular disease, including stroke and heart disease, some forms of cancer, type two diabetes, cataracts and age-related macular degeneration, as well as gout. That reminds me of a joke. Why do pirates eat oranges? For the vitamin C. <laughs> I hope that mom joke earned your subscribe. Nutrient insufficiencies put a strain on the biological systems that require those nutrients to function. It creates a nickel and diming effect that chips away at our health, increasing our risk for just about every uh, disease and symptom under the sun, including increasing risk for cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes, cancer, chronic kidney disease, asthma, allergies, neurodegenerative disease, autoimmune disease, gout, and infection. But importantly, nutrient insufficiencies don't cause health problems directly the way nutrient deficiencies do. It's not one-to-one. -one. Instead, nutrient insufficiencies interact with lifestyle, like how active we are, sleep habits, and stress levels, and with genetics and the environment, all together increasing risk for health problems. So how common are nutrient insufficiencies? Let's look at the numbers. These data come from a 2011 study that evaluated Americans' uh, usual intake of nutrients, including those naturally occurring in foods, from fortified foods, and from supplements like a multivitamin. 100% of American adults consume less than the estimated average requirement of vitamin D. 97.8% of American adults consume less than the adequate intake level of potassium. 96.2% of Americans consume less than the estimated average requirement of vitamin E. 90.2% of American adults consume less than the estimated average requirement of vitamin B9, also known as folate. 80.1% of American adults consume less than the estimated average requirement of vitamin A. 72.4% of American adults consume less than the adequate intake level of vitamin K. 66.3% of American adults consume less than the estimated average requirement of magnesium. 56.3% of American adults consume less than the estimated average requirement of vitamin B1. 54.9% of American adults consume less than the estimated average requirement of calcium. And 52% of American adults consume less than the estimated average requirement of vitamin C. It's also worth noting that this doesn't take into account how certain diet and lifestyle factors can increase our needs for essential nutrients. For example, uh, eating a lot of sugar can increase our needs for B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D. Chronic stress can deplete our levels of vitamin C, vitamin B3, magnesium, calcium, iron, and zinc. And smoking increases our body's requirements for vitamin C, vitamin E, carotenoids, selenium, zinc, copper, and iron. What about people who eat healthy? A 2006 analysis of 70 food logs from 20 healthy subjects, half male and half female, and including 14 athletes, showed that each of them had dietary shortfalls of anywhere between three and all 17 essential nutrients looked at by this study. And a variety of studies show widespread nutrient shortfalls among popular dietary templates, from low carb to vegetarian, gluten-free to the DASH diet. I'll talk about the most common nutrient insufficiencies among these popular diets in a future video. This is why the Nutrivor philosophy is so important. Nutrivor has the very simple goal of getting all of the nutrients our bodies need from the foods we eat. It's quite simply a way of approaching food choices that is geared at fixing this big problem of nutrient insufficiencies. It's such a simple concept, yet a lot of what different diets have taught us over the last 50 to 70 years works against achieving that Nutrivor goal. So Nutrivor isn't just a dietary philosophy, it's also a broad nutritional sciences education so that you can learn about nutrients and what foods contain them and how to choose different foods to get the full range of nutrients our bodies need. The good news is there's millions of different ways that we can choose different foods so that the sum of the nutrients those foods contain add up throughout the day to meet or safely exceed our body's nutritional requirements, all while staying within our caloric intake requirements. And for that reason, there are no foods that you have to eliminate on Nutrivor, nor are there any foods that you have to eat. You can think of Nutrivor as a diet modifier rather than a diet itself. 
It's a set of principles you can apply to however you eat now. If you'd like an overview of the Nutribor philosophy, make sure to check out my video answering the question, what is Nutribor? And make sure to stick around for a new video dropping every Tuesday, tackling an important topic related to Nutribor like discussing the most nutrient dense foods and their health benefits. And if you're all ready to dive in and adopt a YouTuber lifestyle, I've got you covered with the best resource. It's my new book, Nutribor. You can order it from any online bookseller or your local independent bookstores.